Android 15 and iOS 18 are both major new releases that will power the smartphones we're using into 2025 and beyond. There's a lot of AI of course, but more than buzzwords, cutesy or perhaps terrifying images, and new ways to rewrite your resume in the style of a pirate, there are plenty of new features to dig into that really highlight the contrast that still exists between Android and iOS. So with iOS 18 already out and Android 15 rolling out on phones imminently, it's time to take a look at how these two are shaping up. I'm Alex Toby, this is XDA. Let's jump in. So arguably the biggest new feature involving both platforms, especially if you're in the US, is RCS messaging finally coming to iOS. This long promised feature brings the iPhone up to speed with the latest text messaging standards, allowing for better interoperability between the platforms. What does this mean in reality? Well, an easier time for Android folks in group chats that are also inhabited by iPhone people, as well as higher quality image attachments and videos when you're sending between the two platforms, since they'll no longer be sent over the more than 20 year old MMS standard. This is something Google has been pushing for for a long time as the earlier compatibility issues between Bluebubble iMessage users and Greenbubble Android people were a major pain point with Android users often catching flack for Apple's intransigence. If you're upgrading and not yet seeing RCS as an option then you'll likely need to wait for your carrier to update its carrier settings to enable it. Not ideal but hey this is the iPhone so carriers have a good incentive not to drag their feet here. And also new in messaging on the iOS side is scheduled messages something that Google Messages and various other flavors of texting apps have had on Android for a while. Google's app in particular has had this since way back in 2020. The only major new Apple app arriving with iOS 18 is the Passwords app, which acts as a gateway into all the login info saved to your Apple account. Like other password managers, it can notify you of reused or compromised passwords and can also manage on-device pass keys used for certain apps and services. It's also possible to share these passwords with trusted friends or family. That's not something Android has a direct equivalent of, instead the Google Password Manager is a service which kind of straddles a bunch of other Google services. You'll find it in Chrome and it's also part of the autofill service in newer versions of Android. Not quite as simple as just having an app called Passwords where all your passwords live but still works fine. Customization, especially home screen customization, has been a huge part of Android for more than a decade, whereas on iOS it's been more of a recent development. In any case, there are a few big home screen customization changes in iOS 18 that we've already gone over in some previous videos, but to recap, you can now arrange your icons and widgets in a freeform manner, as opposed to having them stacked from the top of the screen. Android of course has had this since the very beginning, get a load of this Android 0.9 beta from 2008, with the same level of icon control added in iOS. OS 18 in 2024. If you prefer your icons extra chunky and without text labels that's now possible too and there's an option to automatically switch them to darker backgrounds when you enable dark mode as well as dark with an additional color tint. I gotta admit I'm not a huge fan of the way this looks in iOS 18 not least because it applies the tint to all your widgets too so things like photos end up looking kinda off. One good thing about the dark mode icon preset in iOS though is it also darkens your wallpaper. Some Android skins like Samsung's One UI also allow this, but it's not part of base Android 15 on Google's Pixel phones. Icon theming is of course part of the Pixel experience and has been for quite a while, though this little beta label that's still here does make me laugh a little. It's been in beta for three years at this point, not much longer to go now until it catches up with the Gmail beta which technically ran for five years. Either way, Android's color theming is more system wide and based on a palette of complementary colors as opposed to just a single color tint on iOS that only applies to the home screen, so I definitely appreciate the Google approach a little more in this instance. Game mode is part of Apple's ongoing push towards making its platforms more gaming friendly and on the other side of the fence it's something we've seen from countless Android devices over the years, not least the many gaming phones from the likes of Asus and others. iOS's game mode prioritizes the game running in the foreground ahead of background activities while also increasing the Bluetooth polling rate for more responsive controls and lowering audio latency from the latest AirPods. Apple isn't messing too much with the way things run under the hood though, no changes to CPU or GPU clocks or anything like that have been reported in game mode, so this isn't quite the gaming turbo mode that you might have seen in more gaming focused Android phones, but still it's a decent quality of life improvement for gamers. And on the Google Pixel side it's not unlike the game dashboard that debuted in Android 13, where you get this little floating control for various things like frame rate counters and streaming to YouTube, plus the option to enable do not disturb mode when you're playing. 
private space is a new feature in Android 15 for keeping certain sensitive apps away from the rest of your stuff so it's less likely to be spotted by shoulder surfers or anyone you might need to pass your phone to temporarily. It's protected by biometrics and tucked away in its own special corner of the app drawer once you enable it. On the iPhone, the iOS 18 home screen also makes it easier to add extra security for sensitive apps. Long press on any app and you can choose to require Face ID. And if you do this, content from these apps won't appear in notification previews or spotlight. And if you want to, there's a separate option to hide the app itself in a special hidden portion of the app library. So on the Android side, satellite connectivity support is something that's going to depend on your brand of choice. And Pixel 9 phones, actually even on Android 14, support satellite for SOS messages in the US out of the box. And Google is building out broader support for satellite in Android 15, as we've reported previously. Other brands like Samsung have been rumored to include satellite functionality, but this hasn't materialized just yet. And a couple of years back, Qualcomm attempted its own Snapdragon satellite endeavor, which ultimately didn't lead anywhere. iOS, on the other hand, has had satellite SOS for a couple of generations now and is adding messaging support for satellite, currently limited to just text, emojis, and tapbacks. Like the Pixel 9 series, you'll get two years of satellite included with a new iPhone. Obviously, the SOS side of things is something we all hope we'll never need to use, but it's kind of interesting to see iMessage and SMS, and notably not RCS, being opened up for satellite communications on the iPhone, which obviously plays into Apple's dominance in messaging in the US. Apple has always maintained a much tighter control over the apps on your iPhone than Google does on Android. That's slowly starting to open up a little in the EU, but for most of the world, Android is still the much more open platform. And that does come with its own set of security challenges if you're installing apps from outside the usual places. So to keep any potential bad apps at bay, Android 15 boosts security with enhanced fraud detection. Messages with one-time passwords are hidden from the usual notification sharing system, so notification listeners can't see them, making it harder for a bad app to take over your accounts. And certain sensitive permissions are also being blocked from apps and not downloaded from trusted sources like the Google Play Store. We've yet to see any sign of the advanced AI-powered on-device scam caller detection features that we saw demoed very briefly at Google I.O. this year, but that kind of feature is something that definitely should be on both platform holders to-do lists. The other side of smartphone security is physical, making it hard for the bad guys to get away with snatching your device out of your hand. This kind of crime is a growing problem in many parts of the world, and stolen iPhones in particular typically end up heading to smartphone chop shops and being disassembled for parts. In iOS 18, Apple is making this kind of crime harder by tying individual components in your iPhone, things like the display and battery, to your Apple ID through activation lock, meaning they can't be used in a donor iPhone without knowing the Apple ID details to remove remove this account-based lockout. And on the Android side, there's a new AI-based theft detection system that uses your phone's various sensors to detect the signs of a possible theft and proactively lock down your device. And like the stolen device protection features added in iOS 17.3, Android's new enhanced authentication can require biometrics as well as a PIN to disable certain security features in the event that a thief sees you entering your PIN. So iOS remains primarily a full screen smartphone OS. There's no multi-window option and the closest you'll get to it is picture in picture for things like Netflix and YouTube. It's a far cry from the experience you now get on an iPad, which is inching closer and closer towards the desktop experience of Mac OS, albeit a more locked down version of that interface. Android, on the other hand, is Android whether it's running on a phone or a tablet. And in addition to trimming away some of the Chrome in full screen and split screen apps on larger displays, Pixel branded Android versions will soon be getting full desktop windowed support. This will be arriving in tablets in Android 15 QPR1 in December and brings the Pixel tablet, and currently only the Pixel tablet for now, up to speed with the likes of Samsung's Galaxy Tab range. It still feels like baby steps compared to the iPad Pro, which can run things like full Photoshop and Final Cut. But but we've been waiting for stock Android software with proper window support for years and soon it seems it will finally be here. Google of course has plenty of new AI features in its Pixel 9 phones which technically at the time we're making this video don't even run Android 15 yet. We'll have more on that in our Pixel 9 Pro XL review. But in brief, Gemini of course replaces the Google Assistant on these latest Pixels as part of a transition we can likely expect across more of the ecosystem soon. 
Circle to Search is already live on Pixels and some Samsung phones, making quick searches, visual lookups, or translations really easy. There's no direct equivalent of that on iOS just yet. But none of these Android AI features are really tied to Android 15 in the same way that Apple Intelligence is a core central part of iOS 18.1. Apple Intelligence is also really hard to judge right now because it's still in beta. The first feature rollout won't begin landing until October in the US. Some markets won't get it until December or even later. The key parts of it I've used so far have been mostly impressive with some caveats. I'm a fan of the visuals behind the new refreshed Photos app, but many of the new features here feel like Apple is playing catch up with Google Photos, especially with the cleanup feature which Google literally had three years ago. Meanwhile, Google is pushing ahead on its latest Pixel phones with genuinely impressive AI capabilities like Reimagine As to add a splash of generative AI to your photos, or Zoom Enhance to restore detail to pixelated zoom shots. On the iPhone, AI notification summaries are a great way to quickly get up to speed with things like group chats without getting swamped by a torrent of notifications, and the AI-based focus mode can help you deal with the vomit wall of notifications that might arrive overnight while you're at work or getting off a long flight. It still kind of feels like addressing the symptoms of iOS notifications being kind of a mess though as opposed to the underlying cause. Android still has a far superior notification system in my opinion. Both OSs have AI note-taking and text rewriting features, which at this point really just feels like table stakes for generative AI, and the same applies to being able to type to Siri and Google Gemini, pretty basic chatbot stuff there, which is surprising that it's only just being added now. And AI image generation in Playground and Pixel Studio is of course a thing. This again is one of those AI features that everyone has that's neither really good or bad, just kind of there. I mentioned Circle of Search earlier, and obviously Google has its own Google Lens feature that's been around for years, but one of the more intriguing features from the iPhone 16 launch event was visual intelligence that sees Apple encroaching more into Google-y territory using the camera control key to identify things in the world around you. This is definitely one of those features that deserves a much deeper dive once it's live. Comparing features in different versions of iOS and Android is increasingly kind of a crapshoot just because of the nature of the two platforms these days. With iOS, new features are still tied to the particular version of the software. With Android, a lot of new stuff arrives through Google Play services updates or Google Play system updates or a simple app update from the Google Play Store. Some of the features that you might think of as Android 15 will actually be backported to much older phones in this way. If you're directly comparing the two though, I'm personally much more of a fan of the Google approach to smartphone software, the extra control you get of the way it looks, colors, contrast, icon grids in Android 15, as well as the way it works. As always, both brands are playing catch up with each other in some areas of the latest operating systems, though obviously AI is a major focus of both as well, and any final judgment on that will need to wait until Apple services are fully live because Apple intelligence could be a game changer that suddenly makes a lot of Android phones feel pretty dated, or alternatively, it could be another Apple flop like 3D Touch or AirPower. That's it for now. Hit the comments, let me know what you think of Android 15 and iOS 18 if you've tried either of these updates. Stick around and subscribe for more Pixel 9 Pro and iPhone 16 Pro coming very soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.